guys, welcome to the F90 channel, it's uh, Chris and Steve. Uh, today we're going to be talking about rear wheel drive versus all wheel drive versus front wheel drive. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so first let's start off with, which one do we want to start off with first? Let's start off with uh, front wheel drive, get that right. shit out of the way. <laughs> let's, get, let's do, we're going to, yeah, let's start off with front wheel drive. So, uh, you have any front wheel drive experience? Um, I've driven, uh, my stepdad had a Honda Accord and then I work at a mechanic shop so I've driven like the cars that I work on and I had to do test drives occasionally and so I've driven a fair share of, you know, any cars in the last three years, any front wheel drive car you can think of. So what's the issue with front wheel drive? So in terms of you need a car to go A to B like you know you're not a car person and like you don't really care the car is just a tool I guess at that point it does not matter like you you know you buy what's comfortable to you so like obviously front wheel drive cars to me seem like they're just lower priced in general compared to rear wheel drive because there's just less rear wheel drive or all wheel drive options so obviously if you're not a car person why pay more for something that I feel like a regular car person doesn't even, can't tell the difference between front wheel drive and rear wheel drive. They don't even know sometimes about their car if it's if you ask them what you know what type of drive chains in there. Yeah. So I feel in that case like it doesn't matter. But like if you are you know you call yourself a car guy or girl and you like driving and like spirited driving or you're trying to do any type of motorsports, I feel like front wheel drive is just it's just not there. It's not. How do you say? And look in terms of like professional racing, how many front wheel drive cars do you really see in, you're not going to see it in NASCAR, Formula D, Formula One, or any other rally. I mean, Maybe Formula D would be tough, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> put some trays on the back. <laughs> um, so it's interesting you said, so a car enthusiast, right? So correct me if I'm wrong, but the new Honda Civic Type R and the Mazda Speed 3 are both front wheel drive cars. Would you say those are car enthusiast cars? Well, I feel like the whole thing with those cars they are car enthusiast cars, but I feel like a lot of kids fresh out of high school or people that are just, you know, money is tight in general, that's the Honda Civic and what was it, Mazda 3 you said, mm. they were good entry level cars. Those are the cars that you guys are first car or if you couldn't afford a Mercedes or some type of higher end car at the time. So, and then a lot of times when you start driving, if you're getting your car from your parents, you know, they're not going to give you, unless they're loaded, uh, you know, a brand new, you know, Mercedes, you know, GT, was it GTR, GTC, they're not going to give you something like that, right? They're going to give you the, their old Honda Civic or their old, you know, Mazda. So I feel like back then, that's what kids got, and then, you know, it's usually the younger crowd that they want to the speed. This is way faster than walking, so to them, this is, in terms of relativity, it's fast as hell, so they want to do stuff to make it faster. And I think Honda and Mazda and other car companies, they saw that, and it's like, mm -hmm. oh, well, these people like the idea of being sporty, so let's market the cars as sporty, throw a wing on a you know, front-wheel drive car, a wing on the back that has nothing to do with, you know, function, it's just there for aesthetics, but, you know, it's going to sell, it's a higher trim model, charge a little bit more money, it still costs less than buying a rear-wheel drive car, but they can have their front wheel drive and be sporty too because they saw where there's that void in the market where people want to be, want to think they're sporty but they're not. You know, so it's an interesting point, right? Um, having a front wheel drive so it's just a much safer option. So for those people who want to push it, what are you going to get? Understeer? I mean, it's not, it's better than having that oversteer and like having it come back around. This one you could just, you know, back off the throttle a little bit. So in a way, I, I get it, I understand, but it's, you know, for that person who wants to go really fast and like, let's say do mess up, or like that learning curve for them getting that performance car is, um, it, it wouldn't be as great as a steep, or as steep, should I say, as a learning yeah. curve of getting a rear wheel drive or maybe an all wheel drive that's more rear wheel drive bias, you know, and you're pushing it through a turn and it's like, oh, there you go, and you go you're 360 and you go into a, a tree. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll definitely agree. Driving a front wheel drive is definitely easier. There's uh, less room for error versus, uh, let's say, rear wheel drive at least. But I would say that, if, especially if you if you're really into into cars and that's your thing, that's your hobby. That's a, outside of work. This is what you're doing all the time. And spending a lot of money, time, effort into this stuff. I think you'd you'd put the effort into learning to drive correctly and like mm. you take pride in you know you're not gonna 
you beat a game on easy, it's like, what was the point of that? Like, you know, you beat that game on like a, you know, a hard difficulty, you know, you feel like you accomplished something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, no, that's funny. Um, my first car was a Mitsubishi. It was a 2011 Lancer uh, GTS. I think it was a 2.5 liter, actually. So it's not the size of a 2 liter Coke bottle. A little I bigger. A, I think it was 2.4. Maybe actually it's 2.4. I'm sorry. Boxers are 2.5, right? Yeah. Yeah, so Supers are 2.4. Okay, so the Lancer the GTS had a 2.4. Um, looks like Steven really liked that car, clearly, since he remembered all the specs about it. Um, I know a little bit of So, no, I had that car. That, that was my first car. So I uh, obviously got a lot of. Uh, a lot of crap from them, from from all the all the guys from having oh you have a four wheel drive, you know. But um, <laughs> that was the Evo. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I, I think it was it was fine. I mean, it only had what 169 horsepower. It you know I wouldn't say it was like crazy performance or anything, but it was it was safe. I mean, I could push that thing and it would just understeer everywhere, and it's like there was no issue, no problem whatsoever. But then again, it wasn't fast enough to you know. I think anyway, you really had to push it really hard and really long down a road for it to really build up any speed where it's like it becomes really serious. Um, it really didn't go that crazy fast anywhere, so it wasn't you know it wasn't that bad. But um, I do agree, it's a lot of fun. Now I've all-wheel drive, so in the rain or in the snow or wherever it is to kind of you know catch the back end, it's a, it's a lot more fun. I will say that, but yeah, yeah and I'll, I'll back off a little bit in saying that. Obviously, there's car enthusiast cars that are front wheel drive, like you said, with the Honda Civic, uh, Mazda Speed 3. I know a lot of people are into the Civics, and then, what's that other car? SRT4 Neons, a lot of people, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. Well, and Volkswagens, a lot of people modify those cars and make them fast. I'm not saying that those cars can't be fast. They could definitely be fast, especially in a straight line. If you have tires that hook, you can, you know, you have unlimited potential as long as you have money, basically. So, but, we're missing an issue, though. Torque steer. So if you put a lot of power, since you're having both what? You're controlling the front wheels and yeah. you're delivering power, now you have yeah. torque steer. So, I don't know, I haven't, I would get a little bit in the GTS. First gear, if you like slammed it, you get a little bit, but that's it. But I know some people have modded Mazda, like uh, Speed 3s, and it's just like, yeah, you're fighting the car, you're trying to get it to go forward, and like you're fighting everything, you know? It's, so, they say it's fun in a way, I don't know. I mean, I know it decreases the performance, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. But uh, you know that's fun for them. That's just a, it's a safe way of fun. You know, instead of having the rear wheels come jump out, you have the front wheels that you're fighting. I feel like in any type of track driving or any type of spare to drive, anytime you're having fun behind the wheel outside of a straight line, I definitely think rear wheel drive and all wheel drive have a have a better edge to it. I guess you could say. Um, I guess I know there's probably people who are going to be like, oh, well, I have fun driving my GTI and my SRT4 Neon and, or my Civic or whatever. I'm sure like it's, it's better than driving a stock one or like a slow, like you said, your experience was with that 169 horsepower car at the flywheel. So obviously if it was a higher horsepower car from which I like that new Civic I think is like 300 or somebody yeah, like turbo day Civic. Right. Yeah, you know, you still get into the boost, the car probably still sounds nice, but like until you've done like some spare driving in a rear wheel drive car, I feel like you're gonna you're, you're still missing out on something. There's still something there that's you know, left on the table. And so because of what Steven said, the dislikes on this video are gonna be astronomical. <laughs> so zero likes is gonna be all dislikes from here on out. Um but but yeah. Um, I don't know what else there is for a front-wheel drive, I think we, we covered it yeah. pretty much. I, uh, my, in my opinion, front-wheel drive is good for a A to B car. That's it. You want to have fun, rear-wheel drive is where it's at. So I don't know if you want to transition into that, or if you want to do all-wheel drive. Uh, let's do rear-wheel drive. Rear-wheel drive. Well, Steven's waiting, he's waiting for the rear-wheel drive. He's like, I can't wait! So, uh, if you watch any of the videos on this channel, you'll see, you know what three cars I have. Two of them are very wheel drive, and I enjoy driving them all the time. I don't, I don't have any. I'll never buy a front wheel drive car. I wouldn't. I I drive them, but I would not purchase, especially new or any type of real money, a front wheel drive car. I'd say that once you get the back tire spinning, or uh, do any type of cornering, there's more of like balance. I feel. I don't know. I could be using the wrong terminology. I'm not a professional race car driver, so... No, I they, agree. They'd be more experienced to tell you. 
yeah. how that feels and you know. But I feel like you're more open to different types of motorsports in that car. If I wanted to go and try some amateur drifting, if I wanted to do a track day, I don't I feel comfortable in those cars to do almost anything. Which you could do a track day in a, a you know, SRT four neon. But I feel like a car like a Miata will always be the perfect car for a track day, especially for a beginner driver versus that. And just because when you want to have fun, it's like you're taming a beast, you know, when you get in the rear end, the rear end out, it just feels a little better than me. You know, the one thing about the turn, I'm sure, you know, once you hit the apex and you want to go on power, you have now you can rotate the car around the corner instead of on the stuff. <laughs> but uh, no, you can rotate the car around the corner, yeah. Um, so I don't have too much experience with rear-wheel drive. I think the only one, actually really the only one, well, I drove Fabio's car, but that was in the parking lot, there's nothing happened. Um, but the only car, is, I, yeah, so I drove the new, um, I test drove the new um, Porsche uh, 911, the, uh, the Carrera S. So that was rear-wheel drive, and it was on a rainy day, and I was like, are you, are you sure you guys want me to go do this? Like, yeah, no problem, okay, so sure, here I go. And uh, I think that's 400 and something, 450 maybe now, I don't know, something like that, something like that, yeah. So, driving on the highway is fine, whatever, but then, you know, it came to an intersection. And I'm so used to all-wheel drive where it's like, yeah, as long as I have my foot in it, it's just going to go, it's going to take me wherever I want to go. I have my foot in it, it can do whatever it wants, so I'm just going to do steering adjustments and everything's going to be great. So, you know, I come out of this, like, uh, <laughs> intersection, like, first gear, I'm like, yeah, whatever. So I just, like, stab the throttle and the thing just, like, immediately kicks to the left, you know. Like, I had the traction control on, obviously, and I, 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 you know corrected as fast as I could while still keeping a little bit of throttle. So like, I think everything was fine. The guy didn't say anything, but anyway. It was terrifying, but yeah, I guess I could see how it could be fun if you master what you're doing, yeah. So I don't have a lot of that. But um, so yeah, drifting, all that stuff, but then what would you say for the safety aspect of overall drive? For safety aspect, I don't feel like if you are a licensed driver and have uh, common sense, you should be able to control. Obviously, there's situations in like extreme rain or extreme snow, but on dry ground, I think you know the car is just as safe as a front-wheel drive car or all-wheel drive car. There's no reason where you're gonna have, unless you are just not purposely, you're not like taking care of proper maintenance, not changing out your tires when they mm. are definitely way, way beyond the you know the, the drivability. Like it's, it's so. In the snow, yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be harder to drive than a front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. Uh, no two ways about it. But there are things that you can do that are not that extreme to compensate, where like snow tires, uh, adding weight to the the trunk area, to where like you know, put some weight on those wheels. And I'll tell you, I had snow tires on the Lexus and the Infiniti. And I'm pretty sure that car with snow tires and a little bit of weight, I would put like a salt bag or some old rotors that I changed out in the trunk. It'll drive better than any front wheel drive in the snow, you know, with regular tires if you didn't, if you had all seasons or something. So obviously if you had summer tires, you're not going nowhere. Uh, obviously all wheel drive, I don't think it'll ever be as good as all wheel drive in the snow or a 4x4. Because, you know, those are, you know, better built for that type of purpose. In the rain, it's where it's like, it's iffy, because you don't really need to change out your tires for the rain. Uh, there's no prep for that, it rains so, like, you know, randomly. You're not going to be changing the setup in your car where snow is, you just change it, like, you know, once for the season, and then change it back when you, the weather changes. Or especially if you live in a place like Florida, then you don't have to worry about snow mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. So definitely if you live down there or somewhere where you don't have snow, what's the point of all-wheel drive, right? So, yeah. um, in the rain, you just, you know, then that's when you would, I feel like it's iffy versus a front-wheel drive where, you know, you could, if something did happen in a front-wheel drive, you know, you're going to be skidding forward, you know, with that understeer, and you're just going to hit the front of the car. That has a crumple zone and blah, 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 obviously you don't want to crash. On a rear-wheel drive, you could spin out, and it's, you know, it's definitely a little bit more sketchy, right? Been there, done that. You don't want to do it either. But you know, no, no crashing. So I've gotten lucky so far. So there's a certain skill level to it, but I don't think it's that extreme. Where if you, where it's like, oh, you're gonna die if you drive a car, 
you know, it's not like yeah. you're driving a. I feel like the risk of driving a motorcycle is way higher than yeah, a regular right. drive car or like you. Know, oh, that's a discussion for another day too. But um, no, you have to do your due diligence as a driver. I understand if you drive from like you know drive every day, all three of the drive trains are fine. You know, but what is, yeah. what's gonna happen? Nothing's gonna happen. But I, I mean, to your point though, uh, all-wheel drive versus rear-wheel drive. In the snow, if you have an all-wheel drive with all seasons, especially summer tires, it's going to go a little bit, but up a hill, maybe not. I'm sure if you guys search a bunch of videos on YouTube, you see a rear-wheel drive with snow tires versus an all-wheel drive with, you know, all seasons or even uh, probably summer tires. It's not going to go anywhere versus the rear-wheel drive is going to take off because it has the tires for it. You know, it's a different compound. Uh, the tires make a huge difference, so. Uh, how about high-horsepower rear-wheel drive cars who, either from a dig or from a roll, uh, always spin and they always have to back out and all that stuff. And uh, not that we do that, none of us have any crazy high horsepower, but I always see well, it all the time. Saw our drag racing video, you know, I didn't hook too well compared to my buddy Chris here and his all wheel drive. That, that's what happens when you have 200 horsepower. Yeah, 201 wheel horsepower. Yeah. So, no, um, obviously, yeah, so like I said, driving skill of the, you know, to definitely master or team driving wheel drive is definitely going to be harder. I feel like a front wheel drive car in that same position would have the same issue with launch. Mm -hmm. They'd be a little bit better because you have the weight of the engine now is on top of the wheels. Where like, you know, I have an empty trunk on mine or like whatever junk you put in the trunk, it's not going to be as heavy as an engine that, you know, really plant those tires. But I'd say there's definitely ways around it. Like I said, changing out, having the right tire anyway is going to definitely increase performance. If you're going to try to run any type of really fast drag racing time on a front wheel drive or a rear wheel drive, even an all-wheel drive, you're going to want some type of, you know, very sticky tire anyway. And then once you go into drag slicks or dedicated drag racing tires, you'll see I think the fastest cars in the world in drag racing are all rear wheel drive anyway. So I think the fastest stick shift car, I think the record was just broken, I think it's a Supra. I think Granis Racing just broke that record. I think it's like it's like a really, really, really low seven seven oh oh five. I think they ran and rear wheel drive. I couldn't tell you the front wheel drive record, so you know you guys could Google it. And you know maybe that record will probably be beaten. I'm pretty sure people are breaking records every day, so a front wheel drive could break that record, but or all wheel drive mm -hmm. could break that record. And uh, but fastest stick shift. I'm talking each pattern stick shift, not a double clutch or uh, sequential transmission. Obviously, those guys go faster. But I th also think in terms of drag racing, if you, you know, take out jet-powered cars, I think uh, rear-wheel drive cars are still faster there, too. It, it is because you have less weight, um, as long as you get the setup right. But then again, you know, per, like, once you get into, you know, maybe even 10s, or once you go to 9s, 8, whatever, you really have to have a good prep car. You have to have the suspension dialed in, because if you don't, and it's not prep for the drag racing, it's not going to take off the right way you want to, right? But then again, that's a car purpose built for drag racing, and when you go do pulls, it you know, might be different. But uh, you need to have it set up the right way, and then the track needs to be prepped, too. You know, you need that traction off the line. But yeah, once you have traction, rear-wheel drive, oh yeah, I mean, you know. I mean, how many times have you guys seen McLaren's beat, well, they're all rear-wheel drive, and they, I don't know if it's just engineering, it has to be, too, and they, they beat all-wheel drive cars from roll all the time. That's the other thing, from a roll, rear-wheel drive is, you know, yeah. same power, it's going to overtake the all-wheel drive, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. Less parasitic loss to the rear wheel drive and um, less weight because all the drive is weight at least more wheel drive. Yeah. Um, also, I would say, in terms of uh, modifying cars and like, uh, at least especially when it comes to engine swaps or changing out your drivetrain, I think rear wheel drive has the most, uh, the most way you could customize. You have the more options in a rear wheel drive versus all wheel drive and uh, front wheel drive. If you try to do any extreme swap, or if you Google any extreme swap, or seen any on YouTube or, or any type of social media, you'll see that they end up swapping them to rear wheel drive. You'll never see a, a rear wheel drive car get swapped to with a with a 4G63 and, and keep it front wheel drive or all wheel. I mean, maybe you see all wheel drive. That's a, the wrong engine. I should have chose like a like a K series. You'll see a K series go into Miata, but it'll go it'll go into a rear wheel drive option versus you'll see some Honda Civics, they have them out there where they, they put in the S2000 drivetrain. Mm -hmm. They'll make that Civic. I've seen some Civics put the engine in the back like an MR2 and have the engine horizontal just in the, the trunk area. 
is the Hatch Civics. Yeah. You've seen one of those one time. They all converted to rear wheel drive. And now they have the weight of the engine in the back also. Oh, yeah. So that's a good setup. It's technically mid engine at that point where, you know, it's the best of both. But in terms of just swapping a car, if you want to stick with your drivetrain, so if you have a front wheel drive and you want to stay front wheel drive, the engine options are limited to what, you know, what fits in the car versus a rear wheel drive car. You could literally throw any any other rear wheel drive engine in there or like in the Miata states where they put those uh, keys here. You can put a front wheel drive in this. As long as you get the, you know, the transmission adapters to fit. Because what, what it really comes down to, the engines are not that much, not really different. It comes down to front wheel drive cars don't have transmissions. They have something called transaxles. Uh, transmissions are in rear wheel drive cars. So once you get the adapter to bolt up the engine that you're gonna put in your car, mm. and there's so many kits now for these, like, so much stuff is made more for rear wheel drive cars. Mustang, everybody's doing LS or 2J swap. You know, their swaps, you know, RB swaps. Uh, they they could be rear wheels or, or all wheel drive. So I favor to think of those cars as rear wheel drive. But you know, this RB26 all wheel drive swaps too. Yeah. And they, they go all wheel drive, but you'll never see really a front wheel drive setup. Somebody converting to a front wheel drive. Yeah, I mean, it's not to say front wheel drive can't go, just going back to front wheel drive, you know, you have those drag civics, right? They have the huge fat tires on the front and they'll run three quarter mile times too. But. Yeah, like you said, in terms of, this is not like, you know, which one's the fastest, because I think rear wheel drive would still win anyway. But in terms of just, you know, just drivability of the, of the car, we just, I wouldn't recommend front wheel drive, but I think front wheel drive, there are fast front wheel drive cars. There are fast front wheel drive cars in, in rally, I probably think there's uh, the front wheel drive cars, well, they're all, they're all, all wheel drive. It, de it depends, because, I mean, you could enter any, whatever, you could do real drive, front wheel drive, all drive, whatever, but I mean, obviously, you know, if you want to slide through a corner, you have all wheel drive, it's going to be the best, right? Because if you have, especially on loose surfaces on, on tarmac, okay, you know, you could argue both ways, but if you go on gravel or snow, I mean, you, you know, you have both the front and rear wheels working to pull you through a corner instead of the rear wheel driver, you kind of have to like control a skid, whereas all wheel drive, just, you slide. Instead of like drifting, you just slide out of the corner, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you can slide into the apex and it'll just take you out, whereas rear wheel drive, I'm, I'm sure you have to do something like, you know, you have to work at it a little bit. But, um, not to say you couldn't do it, I just, I'm sure you'd have an easier time with all-wheel drive. That's why all the like, our WRC cars, I'm pretty sure, are all all-wheel drive. Um, so speaking of that then, all-wheel drive time. But, uh, so I've had, uh, after the GTS, I, uh, I had a 2010 uh, Lancer uh, Evo, Evo 10. And then uh, now I have an Audi S4 2018. Uh, so both all-wheel drive. And, uh, I don't know, you get that safety aspect. I can drive, I mean, on the Evo, I drove in... Uh, High performance summer tires all year round, no matter what. And even I know you know, not really supposed to, or it's better to switch out to winter tires. But uh, I would drive them in the winter, and it would still go. You know, it took a little bit, but it would go, so it was awesome. But anyway, so I mean, you, know, you have that safety aspect, no matter what condition it is. You you know, you're like, okay, I have all-wheel drive, no matter what. The thing is, you know, all-wheel drive is not some special magic power. You know, I see a lot of people driving trucks where, like, you know, you're driving the rain hard, you're driving the snow hard. You know, brakes are still a limiting factor in the snow. You know, just because you have all-wheel drive doesn't mean you're going to brake better than anyone else. That's a separate issue. But, um, you know, if you are going into a turn a little too fast, as long as you have, you know, some power on the throttle or some, you know, your foot on the gas a little bit, and you steer into the direction that you want to go, it's going to pull you out of it because now you have the front wheels helping you out. So, um, you know, I've had that in the rain. I've had it in the dry, too. With Evo, it's a really capable car. I mean, with that system, that active yaw control, I mean, when it kicks in, it just wants to rotate you through a corner. It's awesome. Um, you know, and literally all you have to do is keep your foot on the gas. And it's like, once you learn that from an all-wheel drive perspective, it's awesome. You can just literally go through any corner or anything. Um, I don't know, it gives me just that safety aspect. Because I am, I'm not going to lie, if I had a high horse wheel drive car, I'd be pretty scared to drive. Especially if it's manual. That's, that's just me being honest. Because it is scary. No, yeah. It's part of the fun, but it's, it's, it's scary. So, the other thing that we always debate about is like, okay, well... You know, with all-wheel drive, I could just, I don't care what gear I'm in, I'm whatever, blah, 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 I can just floor it, 
the system figures out the power and I just go, you know, flying into the distance. Whereas real drive, you know, you might have to finesse the throttle a little bit. You know, you have a lot of more work you have to put into the, you know, because you might have the tires that break loose, they might like back off the throttle and then go back on it. You know, all the drive just boom, gone. You know, especially in launch, like, you know, when you're launching it, unless you're at the traction. But if you're on the street, I mean, unless your setup's really, you know, you have to do a burnout for a real drive car, then make sure the setup is right. All wheel drive, for the most of the time, you just kind of boom, launch it, and that's it. Um, so for me, it's nice because, like, it doesn't matter when I can just go hit it and I don't care. If I'm overtaking somebody, if I had a lot of power in a real drive car, this is much that, in my opinion, but if I had a lot of power in a real drive car, since I'm used to all wheel drive, I would just, like, you know, close to four, just go around somebody. If I had a lot of power and I had the steering wheel turn, it's just going to come out, you know, come out a little bit at me. That I'm not used to. I mean, I'm sure if I got used to real drive, it'd be fine. Um, what else? So, yeah, and now I have the, uh, the S4 and all wheel drive. So, in the snow, too, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, you can just, what, hit the gas, turn the wheel, and just do, <laughs> just do donut. But it's a lot of fun. You can just catch it, you know, do all stuff. You can do the same thing with real drive. In the snow, you're going pretty slow anyway. Uh, I did the I did some donuts in the, in the rain, too, with the, with the S4, and that's a lot of fun. Uh, so the one thing I wanted to bring up actually is now they have like the new E63 and the new M5. You can switch between all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive. But why don't they put front-wheel drive in there, Steven? Why is there no all-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, and rear-wheel drive mode that you can put in? Like I'm talking M5. You have M1 is all-wheel drive, M2 is rear-wheel drive, then M3 somewhere hidden underneath, like where the OBD2 is. You have to open up this front-wheel drive. Why don't they? Why don't they do something like that? Because there is no point to that shit. There is no literally front-wheel drive. Like I said, this is my opinion. It's there as a economy option. Yeah. It's just there because it's front wheel drive cars are cheaper to make. So not only are they cheaper to buy, well that's the reason why they are that way. Is there they're just there's less parts involved in a front wheel drive car. Yeah. With that like I said, they don't have a transmission, they have a transaxle. So that's one unit, the differential and the transaxle there's no drive shaft, right? And then you have two C V axles coming out the side going to the, the wheels. All right, so there's less, definitely less parts in all-wheel drive and even less parts than a rear-wheel drive. So it cut production costs. And then a lot of the cars nowadays you see, they're the same. You look at a, a V6 Ultima and a Maxima, it's the same car. You look at a V6 Camry and an Avalon, it's the same drivetrain, I should say. All right? A lot of cars share, you, uh, you know, the Murano and the Maxima, they share a drivetrain. You know the, the front wheel drive ones. A lot of the car manufacturers like to reuse mm -hmm. their the two stuff they have. They don't really have this part is dedicated and it's only for a car unless it's a high end performance car of the brand. Like so, like let's say the Corvette. The Corvette might have certain things of, of it that are just only in Corvettes. But you could say in uh, in terms of like an Impala and a Malibu, which are both also Chevy and GM. They're gonna share a lot of things, so yeah. they save money. So like, there's no performance perspective of front wheel drive. There's no, there's nothing you get extra in a front wheel drive that all wheel drive or rear wheel drive doesn't have. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but Steven really, really hates front wheel drive. I think if there was a worldwide phenomenon where there was like a a law or something that has to be inputted, like you know that. Everybody has to drive a front-wheel drive car. Steve will be in the UN the next day. He's going to be fighting everybody that, no, front-wheel drive is not the way to go. But um, just back to all-wheel drive then, because uh, I guess I said yeah. my point, but like, anything you have to well, add Well, I know, so I have the Subaru, you know, the Superior. I, I would say, though, that out of all the all-wheel drives, I know you like the Mitsubishi, but I, you know, at least I'm talking to other people, too, that Audi and Subaru are definitely way superior versus Nissan or BMW and Toyota. I would say in terms of all-wheel drive systems. Now, is Mitsubishi Evo fast? Yes, it is. Yeah. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying they're bad cars. Um, i also driven 4x4s, which is different than all-wheel drive. Uh, used to, uh, my first car I started, that I learned to drive in was a Jeep Grand Cherokee. And that had, you know, select track. It had a transfer case. And you could you go in from rear-wheel drive to a four-wheel drive uh, full-time, and then a part-time, and then a four-wheel drive part-time low. So you had options, you know, and then obviously in the winter time I would change it, but obviously 90% of the time I'm driving in rear wheel drive into that, with that Jeep. So you can say my first car was rear wheel drive too. Even though it was, I don't consider that my first car, it was the first car I'd driven. Um, I'd say in terms of driving the Subaru, because it's my all wheel drive car, definitely in the winter time in the snow, 
like I said, the Lexus or the Infinity with snow tires, it's not gonna, it's not, I, I can't drive as fast as I would in the Subaru. Now in terms, of, I like what you said about braking, all cars have four wheel brakes. So just because your car is all wheel drive does not make you brake better. So just, you know, just uh, a lot of people get confused and think, well, you know, it's a truck, it's all wheel drive, it's this, it's, you know, how come I couldn't do this? Like, I think driving in the snow should be taught, like, especially in driving classes. I feel like nobody talks about that. And then you go, at least when I went to drive and I did my six hours and I had my learner's permit, like, I feel like that's something you have to learn from your parents or learn from people who've driven and stuff. But, like, in, I don't think there's any questions on the driving exam. I can't remember. It's been years since we took that. Oh, man. I, I still remember think. the fire hydrant one. Well, how many feet the fire hydrant? a bus. Something about a bus. Which nobody does. I, I don't remember any of those Bus, questions. bus, bus. But I definitely feel like stuff like that, it, it, you need to drive differently. You need momentum. You need to use momentum as your friend. And then you said, when driving all-wheel drive, there's certain things that you could do differently to save a situation you know, versus a front-wheel or rear-wheel drive. So, in terms of uh, racing, or especially drag racing, out of the three cars, the Subaru probably has the least power. But I'll tell you, it has the fastest 60 foot. No, at least, especially like on the, on, you know, just feeling. Take the launch on the Subaru, it definitely takes off harder. Just because I haven't got the Lexus or the Infinity to hook up right. I think if they could hook up right, if I had, you know, an actual, you know, bias by tire or something that could, you know, a drag tire, it would definitely take off just as hard, or maybe even harder than the Subaru. But. So I could see where the appeal of all-wheel drive comes in, where it could do anything a front-wheel drive could do, and it could do almost anything a rear-wheel drive can do, mm -hmm. right? And then it's just it could do even more. Like it has its own area of where it's just far superior. Um, the Subaru, I definitely think it's you know it's a good all-wheel drive car. I'd say that they how do you um, explain this? They they can't go you can't go wrong in all wheel drive in terms of it it could do rally racing obviously mm -hmm. in Formula One like you said the weight would probably be the only downside I guess I would say to yeah. uh, all wheel drive but it, in terms of you add a little bit of power like I feel like the weight uh, especially in daily driven or you know street driven cars unless you have purpose built drag racing all wheel drive cars are going to be faster in terms of a car that you can race and daily, all-wheel drive is definitely going to be my pick. Now, so that's for the everyday drive. If you have multiple cars, you have both. I have all-wheel drive and a real drive. That's my recommendation. You get one of each. One to have fun in, and then one, you can still have fun in the all-wheel drive. Chris has a blast in his all-wheel drive car. And then you still are good for the winter time. If you live in Florida, why, why people yeah, all wheel true. drive? Do whatever. Yeah. The other thing I'll say, like, uh, you reminded me of something. So, the Evo's all wheel drive system, the way it is, like, it wanted to rotate. If you drove it hard enough, you would want to rotate around the corner. The Audi's, it's like as if it wants to pull you as fast as possible through a turn. So, if I'm driving, let's say, in the rain or in the snow in the, in the Evo, it will just rotate the end much more easily. Like, you could be at, ro at low speeds and it would want to rotate the back end much, fa uh, much faster. The Audi, it just wants to get through the corner as fast as possible, which, you know, when I first experienced it, I'm like, well, this is completely different. It just, you know, I know that's what it was made for, you know, because um, Audi and, and Quattro and rally racing, you know, you want to go through the corner as fast as possible. But, you know, I was trying to have fun. So the first time I tried it, I was like, well, this is not like the Evo's all-wheel drive system at all. You know, the Evo's like, yeah, you can just mess around and do a turn. Like, you do a really low speed. But the Audi's like, no, I want to go through this turn as fast as possible. I want to do this donut as fast as possible. And you're flying, you know. Um, the one thing with my car is like it won't bounce off the limiter, so it'll shift. So like as soon as I did it in first gear, I went to second and started going to third. I'm like, okay, and then you're going so much faster <laughs> around this like, you know, you're going third gear in the drift. I was like, no, <laughs> uh, I need to stop that. So, so f oh, go ahead. What I was gonna say is like this might not be the right explanation, but what I would say is the difference between your Audi all drive setup and the Evo is that the engine placement, or not the engine placement, but orientation. So your engine in the Audi is, I think it's called longitudinal. But it's it's the front is at the front of the car and it aims back and you actually have a transmission mm -hmm. with 
I think on the Audi I haven't looked under there. It's similar to the Subaru or like a GTR, this, this, the older RB26. So with the transmission, it's that transmission and the front has axles coming out the side and then you have the drive shaft to the back. So with the Evo, it's a transverse where the engine is horizontal. So like I said, now you have no transmission. It's technically a transaxle is the correct term for that. Uh, so all the weight or most of the weight is in the front. So it mm -hmm. the car can still be balanced because you still have the gas tank in the back and you can mm -hmm. the button. But like a lot of the drivetrain mm -hmm. is still in the front and you still have a drive shaft going back but it's a much smaller drive shaft going back versus well it's a longer one but skinnier than the Audi has that transmission which is like more towards the center of the car. And I believe that the Audi engine sits further back also. But I, mean, I could be wrong, I'm not sure. Uh, I see rear wheel drive cars, engines, they do sit them further back because they're so much longer. They have more weight to the middle of the car versus the front of the car. So that's where that different feel where like, the back end on the Evo is so much lighter. Yeah. Where it could kick out. I, I also put, like, I did weight reduction on the Evo, so I had a lightweight battery. I like, stripped the trunk, there was no spare tire, so I mean, there's also that too. And, like, you know, that could play a role in it, but it's just, it was completely two different experiences. The other thing is, like, I got really happy at this, this is another point. I always thought, okay, yeah, all-wheel drive is awesome, but, you know, I wanted to mess around with, with rear-wheel drive, go to the dark side, try to see what it's like, you know, just a little bit, just to see what it is, you know. Either another car or something, I'm like, you know, it would be awesome if they made a car that had both, that you could switch. And when the M5 and the E63 came out, I was super happy, because you could just drive, and then if you want to act like a hooligan, you could just switch rear-wheel drive, and boom, you have rear-wheel drive. So you do burnouts, you could do drifts, whatever you want. And I was like, this, this is awesome. So imagine, I mean, it's probably you know expensive to put that in, and those are like the higher tier models. Yeah. But if most cars had that, I mean, damn, you know, it's you have the best of both worlds. Then. I mean, yeah, the weight is still there, but at least you can mess around with, with everything. Oh yeah, definitely. And then with all technologies in cars, the heated seats, backup cameras, they start off in the high end luxury cars, you know, BMWs, Mercedes, or even higher up, and then they trickle down to where now uh, everyday Corolla has you know, heated seats and backup cameras now. So, who's to say in the future that cars, if we don't all go electric, has those options. I think that might not, you know, transfer down just like heated seats would because I feel like not a lot of people are gonna pay extra to have all that technology. So there's gonna still be that people that wanna buy a really low budget economy car, the cheapest car they can have that is reliable, and that's gonna be front wheel drive. So, I think my take on all three drivetrains would be, if you want a car just to go A to B, and you know you just want to save as much money as possible, you do not care about you know driving aggressively, and you think that's all all that stuff is immature, and you're not going to waste money spending your car because you have a, a house to pay for and other things and vacations and all that stuff. Yeah, why not front wheel drive? You know, it doesn't matter at that point. Any major safety concerns about driving where it's, like, it's too hard to drive or anything, and it's still decent in yeah. uh, in any weather condition. But I think if you want to go fast and have fun and have that real race car experience and have that whole setup going on, rear wheel drive is definitely where it's at. And then in terms of where all the drive falls in, I would say it falls in if you want to have a car that you daily and have fun in at the same time. You have a one car for all your purposes. You don't have multiple cars where you could have a daily and then a car that, you know, a weekend car, a side car. Then definitely all wheel drive is where you want to be because I think those cars can go fast and you don't have to have an extreme crazy setup like a rear wheel drive. A 10 second all wheel drive car, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be easier to daily mm -hmm. or more, you know, less than mods to daily than a 10 second rear wheel drive car. So if that's something you wanna look in all wheel drive, and obviously you pay, you get what you pay for. I think all wheel drive at the end of the day is gonna cost you the most anyway. Yeah. So. I mean, I echo the, the same thing Steven said. Uh, I will say, if you live in Florida and let's say, or you live in an environment where you don't have snow and maybe just rain really, I think any three is fine. I mean, if you're just driving it, whatever, at that point, it yeah. doesn't matter. Save your money, buy from yeah. the drive. I think, yeah, actually. Or you could do rear-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, whatever, doesn't matter. If it's warm out there and it's always like 80, 90, I mean, what, what do you, you know, nothing's going to happen. Um, 
So, and then, yeah, if you want to do performance, I think it'd be the or. I think exactly what Steven said, I think is right. Yeah, definitely if you're into the car thing and you want to, even though I'm not saying you have to be a professional race car driver, you just want to go and just try a track day, see what it's like to, you know, behind the wheel on a track and, and, and drive, or even if you're doing drag racing, or if you're, if you're doing, trying to do drift. I don't know if there's any places where you could do amateur rally. I don't know if that exists or not. But <laughs> no, that's, that's actually funny. But you can enter on the same tracks all the pros do too. So it's like yeah. So then you can do all that stuff, you know. And a railroad drive kit, you could do all that stuff. People have been there. People have done that. It's once you master that, it's it can really do everything. I think in like I said, in every category, especially straight line racing, it is the fastest. I think in in terms of what's the fastest car in the Nurburgring. So in terms of cornering and ability, maybe all-wheel drive takes it, I'm not sure. It, it, it depends, like, which criteria, right? Because, like, they have the race car, and I think there was, what, the Porsche 919, the Evo, the, like, the LMP1 prototype. The electric or the hybrid? It's maybe? a hybrid, yeah. That thing was, like, I think that's, I think that might be the fastest. It was, I think, last, or whenever they did the run, I think they did run last year. That was the fastest, like, you know. But that thing, it's a race car, hybrid technology, that's, like, race car technology, yeah, motorsport technology. I don't think you, can't you, buy, you can't buy that now. No. So. I mean, I'm sure if you, if you, you know, talked to yeah. Porsche really nicely and was like, hey, listen. Please. But, please. <laughs> Just say please a couple of times. I'm sure it'll work out. But, yeah. But I would say if you can afford it, if you want to do one for private, obviously, then if you can afford it, I would still recommend, you know, to get a daily that you drive so you have that reliability. You don't not have to be messing with it. Um, that's what I would go for get a daily and then get a fun rear wheel drive car for the weekend or to work on, to modify, to make fast, to do track days. Uh, it's hard, it's, it's really hard on a car to, you know, drive that car every day to work, have time to work on it, then have time to take it to the track and, and, and then beat on it. And um, it's doable, people do it, right? In a front wheel drive car, rear wheel drive, and all wheel drive cars, it's, all, it's been done. But in terms of how much effort do you need to put in, into that? A all wheel drive car, I feel like this takes less effort, especially if it's a, you know, obviously age comes in and the type of transmission you have factor into that stuff too. But this in general, all wheel drive car, like uh, that Evo, the Evo is way better daily than uh, a Mustang, I'd say, in terms of there's a back seat, so now you're going to the sedan proof thing. It's all wheel drive, so it's good in all weather. So. Hey guys, so that concludes our discussion on all wheel drive versus rear wheel drive versus front wheel drive. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any other topics you think we should discuss, definitely let us know. You know, we like talking about cars, and we could do it for days. So don't forget. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially if you get set Stephen loose, he's just gonna you know talk forever. So we're here at 2 a.m. right now. <laughs> don't forget our, our friends' channel, 2 a.m. Cars. We could just do a live stream of just everything. But anyway, and actually, if you guys tune in Wednesday. Um, I continued the review of the the S4, and you're going to get an in-depth review of the interior, a review of the interior of the S4, and that's going to be a long, long, long video. But if you like in-depth, if you like in-depth reviews, I mean, I go over basically every button, every menu setting in there. So if you're really looking at an S4 or B9, uh, you're going to find out everything from the exterior and interior, and then uh, eventually I'll do a review a few weeks after that. But that's what's coming up soon. All right, catch you next time, guys.